Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss a new poll showing the scale of support for rejoining the EU amongst the young. Yes, yes, I know. Not a significant voting block, Phil, unfortunately. But when you consider a few other factors as well, it does point quite clearly to a sheep infested island which is going to get louder and louder in its desire to be part of Europe once more. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So, I'll be going over the uh, local elections again when we've got the full results uh, this evening and the 7pm stream. Let the dust settle for the rest of the day. But in the meantime, there's been another interesting, though I suppose not surprising poll. Young people want us to rejoin the EU. And you ever wonder why Brexiteers are so frantic about their ghoulish little project? It's because while they may have won in 2016 and then again, dispiritingly in 2019 their future is grim they're like a general who overcommitted and captured a lot of ground very quickly but doesn't have the forces to defend it a recent poll has found that 18 to 25 year olds would vote vote to rejoin the eu by 86 percent to 14 percent now given that this is one of those polls which is suspiciously excluding the don't knows it can't truthfully be said that 86 percent wants to rejoin the eu i do wish people would stop presenting polls like this leave the lies and misleading stats to the brexiteers but anyway this was on the itv so what do i expect but it is an absolute powerhouse of a majority however you look at it it's it's six young voters wanting to rejoin the eu for everyone that does not Back in 2016, we had a very unbalanced generational picture as well. About 70% of elderly voters backed leave, but about the same 70% of young voters backed remain. Well, guess what? Many of those elderly voters are not going to be about much longer, but the younger voters will keep getting older and entering the ages when voting in large numbers seems like a good idea. The question is, quite reasonably, uh, the question has been asked whether we will just get used to being outside the EU over time. Maybe the anger will abate. I think it is a fair question, but I'm very confident the answer is no. Consider the situation. We're a huge economy and we have left one of the three superpowers of trade. In fact, we were one of the big three in the driving seat of one of those big three trading superpowers. The Brexiteers tried to argue that they were too protectionist and that we'd get freer trade outside. This has not occurred. The EU is protectionist, sure, to third countries to an extent, but it still has the freest trade possible inside it. Completely free trade. Plus, it has really good trade deals around the world as well. China and the United States are also protectionist. Plus, the US is becoming more protectionist with its Inflation Reduction Act. The EU is having to follow suit, so we're going to find problems with that as well. The future of UK trade is one of being isolated. The flood is coming and we've just jumped off Noah's Ark because we've got a problem with the zebras. There are other reasons why I think the young, as they get older, will remain pro-European. In fact, I think there are two solid reasons. The first is that we will constantly experience problems that just don't occur in the EU. So if you are imagining this, this get used to it because the very young now maybe, maybe don't remember what it was like when the EU. So when they're older, it's like you don't miss what you never had. But there are going to be problems. Like whenever there's a change of wind in Spain, we're suddenly without a load of fresh veg in the supermarkets. Also, are we really going to get used to shortages of medicines? There comes a point where Brexiteers can't blame COVID or the war in Ukraine or even the space monkeys, which are no doubt coming the way this decade is going. There comes a point where people realise that all we've had since Brexit is excuses. But the second big reason is that other polling shows that the younger generations of voters aren't turning conservative as they get older in the same way that previous ones have. And that's because instead of enriching them, capitalism is failing them badly. Many are not on the housing ladder. Wages are held back. No ability to save. You know, you, you, some of these people, they're 40 years old. They're no better off than when they were 20. The climate emergency is more urgent in their minds. And the Conservatives simply represent problems rather than solutions to them. 
And this isn't just about these voters being less likely to vote Conservative over the next couple of decades. This is about them being less inclined to even take seriously Conservative ideas. And it's not even like we're reliant on younger voters coming through and maintaining their sanity into middle and old age. No sector of our economy thinks that Brexit's been a good idea. Right now, we have a government who simply ignores them. Even the MPs who know that they're right don't want to listen because they're politically trapped. And I know people think, well, Labour are taking a daft stance as well, but there are numerous distinctions. For example, people keep pointing to Tory MP Tobias Elwood, who was once again this week talking on, on national media about the madness of remaining outside the single market. They look at this, there's a Tory MP say we should rejoin. And they think that that means the Tories are going to become the anti-Brexit party and leave Labour with the Brexit baby. But Tobias Elwood is one Tory MP pissing in the wind. Not a single of his colleagues supports him. Labour have got loads of MPs who call out the damage Brexit is doing on a regular basis. You just don't hear them often because the Tory controlled media don't give them a platform to share those views and they're bog useless at doing it at themselves. But I was explaining to someone, the Labour Party even has an affiliated group who are explicitly campaigning to reverse Brexit. Again, you might not be familiar with it because no support from the mainstream media and bad at growing their own platform. But the point is that Labour will not be ignoring experts in the various sectors of our economy and they're not as ill at ease at reversing Brexit as you may imagine. They just don't want to be talking about it right now. But they cannot afford to allow our economy to stagnate when they are in power. The Conservatives destroy our economy. The media will happily blame anyone and anything rather than the government. If anything is less than grand with the economy under Labour, they will blame the government even when it isn't actually their fault. Everything is pointing towards a reversal of Brexit. It's just that it won't happen overnight. Industry wants it. The future of our democracy wants it. It's the Brexiteers who are right to be panicking. They may have known that their insane project wouldn't fly forever, but probably thought they'd have longer to asset strip the country. After the 2019 result, they wouldn't have imagined only five years later that they'd have to abandon power. They thought they'd have a good decade at least to break the country up and sell it all off to the lowest bidder. But now they've got a Tory Prime Minister who's not only dialed down the crazy a little, but a Labour government coming in next year. Their precious retained EU law bill has been battered into a shadow of its former self and they probably know that an extreme pro-Brexit Tory party isn't coming back to power with the way both public and industry opinion is and the trajectory of it for the next decade. So I would say, not so much chill, but keep talking about Brexit, keep calling out the lies, especially that nonsense about exports being up, which ignores inflation instead of looking at trade volumes. Keep supporting the public engagement events if you're able, and yes, keep mithering Labour politicians as well. But it really is just a matter of time. If the natural trajectory of Brexit opinion doesn't do it more quickly, then the future of voting in this country absolutely leans towards a demand that the UK be at the heart of Europe again and not adopting the position of an old man smelling of piss shouting at the pigeons to get off the lawn. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.